and then triggered updates uh, kind of assist with this too. So uh, routing advertisements go out periodically anyway, like for RIP it's every 30 seconds. In addition to that, if a router receives an advertisement for something that's changing, um, it can send out another update immediately rather than waiting for the per periodic route advertisement. So, you know, you're, you've already sent out a route update, a link goes down, or you learn about a new route somewhere, um, you still got 20 seconds or so before the, um, your normal route update would go out from the router. Because something has gone down, a triggered update will, will be sent out so that all the routers immediately know about the, um, about the change. And then also you've got invalid uh, dead timers. Um, preventing routing problems in the event a they prevent router problems in the event a router becomes inoperable in some function that does not cause the link to drop. So in other words, like say um, you know that previously we were talking about like a break uh, in just the the connection between A and B. Well, let's say that like instead of a, a broken connection, router A was still up and that interface was still up and it was still able to like receive information but there was some other problem with the router uh, that would that was causing it to not route traffic properly invalid dead timers uh, assist with that so timers are reset every time a routing advertisement is received again if an advertisement hasn't been received at, again after a certain time threshold the route will be removed from the receiving routers uh, route table so like in the case of router A, if it became inoperable um, in such a way that it was still like, uh, I guess, has the links up, it wouldn't, it would be inoperable so it wouldn't be able to send out its route updates. Uh, so after a certain period of time, those, um, the routes that everyone is learning from router A would be removed from the routing table. So for like RIP, um, oh it actually gets into it right here. 30 seconds is the recent interval, 180 seconds is the invalid timer. So after you miss six updates from a router, you'll just go ahead and wipe that from the um, from your route table for the individual router. So RIP is the main one we talk about for distance vectors. Um, routing information protocol is what the acronym stands for. It's an open standard, is it, uh, as in non-proprietary. Cool. We'll talk about some more later that are you know Cisco proprietary. Uh, hop count is the only metric that it uses, and as we, we said before, uh, it's got a, an infinite or a, a maximum hop count of 15. In cases with multiple routes of equal hop count, it will load balance up to six routes at four by default. We talked about that before too. So if it gets, you know, two uh, two routes to the same network that both have a hop count of three, um, it'll put both of those in the routing table and uh, load balance between those two routes rather than just selecting one or the other arbitrarily. So does that only apply to like close routers? I mean, what if one router is all the way across from the country from another router? I mean, it's obviously going to take longer than 180 seconds. RIP will not. Well, no, no, it, it won't take a, more than 180 seconds to receive just like the the routing updates. Like it's it's just a small amount of no, information. So, it's just, so it's just the updates and not like actually trying to ping the devices. Yeah. So um, and like I mean for for it's larger. For, for like larger networks like that too, where you've got like these, um, you know, say like for OC12s or whatever, that they're spanning like really big distances or whatever, you're probably not gonna be using RIP for the routing protocol on that anyway. You're probably gonna be using OSPF or, or something else, like OSPF or BGP, some combination of the two. RIP is, um, you know, for, for us, you know, gonna be like for individual sites. And then RIP is like refed into like BGP, which is a, a more um, efficient, better protocol for like large scale so but yeah ben, Ben's right like you're gonna get the um, you're gonna get it in much faster than uh, 180 seconds could be a bunch of satellites <laughs> and then uh, let's see RIP version uh, RIP, we've talked about this previously as well RIP v1 is classful RIP v2 can also support classless so RIP v2 is also classful inherently but you can enter a sing another command in there the no auto summary to make it uh, classless as well. And I did not bring the router today. I think um, to actually show you these configs, it's only a few lines. I think what I'm probably going to do is next time um, have like the a couple of routers so that we can do the the rib configurations as well as the EIGRP configurations to see how they um, traverse the network. So. For RIP version 1 uh, configurations, uh, make sure you advertise only your directly connected networks. So in other words, you don't want to advertise like some kind of um, 
network that you don't know is directly connected to you, like maybe the router right behind you, because obviously if something on that router goes down, you may not know about it, and so you'll, you'll be sending out um, route advertisements that aren't valid. Um, and then for RIP version 1, at least, advertise only the classful network. So right below you've got uh, basically the, the full command structure for this. Uh, router RIP, the, the router command basically throws you into the routing uh, set of uh, command structures, and then whatever follows that you know, is going to be the, um, the protocol in question. So for RIP, it's going to be router space RIP. For EIGRP, it would be router space EIGRP, and it would throw you into the subcommands for that particular routing protocol. So router RIP, um, and you can see it changes to config-router instead of just config. And then define your network. So um, if you've got connected, you know, say you've got a router that has you know two sets of interfaces, one that connects to a 172.16.00 network, and another one that class connects to a class C 192.168.1.0 network. To advertise both of those, you would need to uh, put network in each of each of those. And then this at, this uh, last command is actually an optional command um, that changes the the maximum number of paths that will load balance between uh, to six. As I said before, inherently it is four uh, four routes that it can load balance between. Um, so you don't have to have that last command, but put it in here because it is uh, it can be helpful. Uh, and then another thing to mention on. Uh, Group configuration is passive interfaces. Passive interfaces are interfaces that you do not want to advertise routes for whatever reason. Now, if you've got, um, you know, when we talked about split horizon, it's already going to like not advertise out the routes that learn from that interface. But if you don't want a particular interface to participate in RIP whatsoever, uh, you would use the passive dash interface and then the interface name um, while in the uh, router RIP router RIP configuration mode to to signify that. And then for uh, RIP version 2, um, this is only actually highlighting on some of the differences that RIP version 2 has over uh, version 1. Um, for one, it has multicast updates on 224.0.0.9, and what that does is it prevents um, it prevents like everything from having to listen to RIP updates because only um, only devices tuned into that multicast address of 224.0.0.9 are going to receive those updates. So only, and that is that IP is specifically reserved for RIP version two uh, updates, route updates. So only devices that are configured to support version two and are listening on 224.0.0.9 are going to receive the the routing updates. Um, as we said before, it supports both both classful and classless support. And then uh, it also supports authenticated updates, which allows you to uh, set a password protection on your updates to provide enhanced network security, so that you don't have, you know, some other network connect to you somehow and start uh, advertising route updates that aren't uh, valid. If you've got a password protection on that, you know that everything that, that's going out on your network on those updates is going to be valid. So for the configuration of RIP version two. Um, it actually starts off identical to, to RIP version 1, router space RIP, and then the to specify it as version 2, uh, once you're in uh, router config mode, it's just version space 2. Um, and then if you want to enable classless routing uh, instead of just the inherent classful, entering the no space auto dash summary command enables the uh, the classless variable link subnet mask um, networks. And then you can, you can actually include like subnets here as well, but uh, then you just have to define your networks the same as you would in, in one network 172.16.0.0, network 192.168.1.0, and the uh, if you want to set um, uh, your max paths above four, it's the exact same command structure as version uh, version one as well. Uh, and then for 